Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Luna Capital by Devere Games. This game plays two to four players, takes 30 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in Luna Capital, what are you doing? Well, you are building your uh, colony on the moon. Your objective is to gather as many victory points as possible by building things like energy and hydrogen and oxygen. Don't forget about your fruits, different types of apples and pears, the best type of fruits to be used on the moon. All at the same time while using robotic manufacturing things as well as being able to redistribute or destroy or bulldoze your other current buildings to create the best possible locations for all of your different factories and resources. On your turn you're going to be gathering a construction card and all the tiles associated with them at the bottom, placing a card down from your hand to create your own player board or player area, and then placing down all your construction tiles onto the spaces presented in front of you. And after you go through the phase A, B, and C with four rounds apiece, increasing the number of different construction tiles you get and cards that come out, you're going to tally up your points. Don't forget to add any bonuses that you might have achieved while playing the game, and don't forget to utilize all of the objects that you've gained from the different types of uh, uh, constructions that you've got gathered throughout the game. Each of them is going to score different and we can be combined in a total of points, whether it be similar to a game like uh, Mad Castles, the Mad the Castles of Mad King Ludwig, or uh, maybe more like Between Two Castles, but you're just playing on your own separate player board. Will you gather the most victory points and craft the best colony on the moon? Find out in this game, Luna Capital. So let's discuss the setup for the game Luna Capital. And we're going to discuss it in a four player setting, but I will explain how it is reduced in a three or a two player game as well. The first thing you're going to do is give each player one of their player boards here, whether it be Luna Taxis, Moon Paradise, Space Royal Cruise, or the Astro Burger. And you're going to give each of the players three different meeples that represent their character. After you do that, you're going to take all of your construction cards, shuffle them up, and deal out four into the different spaces present on the game board. Then you're going to take three of them and give them to each of the players playing the game. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and place construction tiles down, one underneath each construction card. Take the robots and place them in their space, and the recycling tokens and place them in their space. Gather two unique type of end of game bonuses that are the green ones and place them on the left end of middle space, and then finally the red one and place it on the right. Take all of the ale, A construction tiles and place them in this little thing that you've made, and basically it's like a little rocket ship, and give somebody the first player marker. Finally, you'll take out the the scoreboard marker and place it somewhere within reach of all players for the end of the game scoring, and lastly leave the B and C tiles separate and away from play. If you're playing with less than four players, take out any of the tiles that the game tells you to. They're going to have little dots on them, so if they have uh, less than the number of dots or, or more than the number of dots in the game that are being played, you can take those away or equal to. Uh, so in a three-player game, you take away any three tiles in these stacks, and in a two-player game, you take away any two and three tiles in these stacks, which will give you just enough tiles to play the game through thoroughly. All right, let's go ahead and talk about gameplay now. Oh, one more thing. Before you you start, you're going to take this little construction marker here and place it on the far right, top left, uh, far left top corner of the board facing one of the construction cards. It has four different spots that it will go to. So how do we play the game? Well, it's pretty simple. You got your three cards in hand and you are going to basically be selecting one of the four construction cards that are present. When you take one of those cards, you'll put it in your hand and then you'll take any construction tiles and place them face up in front of you. After that, you'll take one of your cards and place it down, creating a grid. You can make three rows and, uh, and any number of columns that you would like. So after you get to your third row, that's it. But you can go as far left or as far right as you want. There is a catch though. For each row, you're going to have numbers on your cards. On the top left-hand corner of the cards, you're gonna have a number. You're always going to be playing cards from left to right or uh, right to left as long as the lowest number is on the left hand side and the highest number is on the right hand side. So you can never go one, two, four, three. You can only go one, two, four, five, seven, nine, ten. And that's as far as you can go for each of them. However, you're only going to get 12 player turns, so it's not going to be a huge deal, but it is going to make a difference when choosing how to place your tiles or your cards down. So basically formulate your board, because each player is going to get their own unique board. So I go ahead and take a card, maybe this two here, and I would place it down, creating my grid, the starting of my grid. 
After you place your card down, you'll take your tile or tiles that you get and place them down onto one of the spaces on any of the different construction cards that you have present. After you've done your placement, if there is anything that the card does, you will simply do it. Like for instance, this one will let me draw three cards, choose one of them into my hand and discard the other two. And then you're going to be done. You're going to refill the space with a new construction card. You're gonna take out a new construction tile and you're going to pass your turn. And each player is going to do that for the first round of the phase. On the second round of the phase, what's going to happen is you're going to add an extra tile to each of the spaces on the board. So the ones and twos are going to be filled up in the second round. The same will be said in the third round. You'll fill up ones, twos, and threes. And in the fourth round, you'll have all four spaces filled up. Once you've gone through four rounds of the A phase, you'll take out all the A tiles and you'll put in all the B ones. You'll remove all of these and keep the construction cards and add new construction tiles. One for each for the first round, two for each for the second, three for each for the third. I think you get it. And on the third phase, take out the B, remove the B construction tiles, put out the C and do the same thing. After the fourth round of the third phase, you're going to see what you got on your board and you're going to tally up all the points and you're going to use this little score tracker to determine and what you're going to get. You'll score points based on the different vitality systems and how you've combined them, making them connect from left uh, to right, uh, top to bottom. You're also gonna get points for the plants that way as well. You'll get additional points for plants if you can gather certain sets, apples, uh, pears, and lemons. For each of the three, you're going to get a certain number of points. Uh, you're also going to be getting points for asteroids. Whoever has the most will get points, then second most and third most. Money symbols will grant you two points at the end of the game. Construction sites will give you points based on what those cards do or tiles do I should say. You'll get points for each card in your hand which I'll explain why in a second and you'll also get points if you can complete these objectives here. These are going to have a certain requirements whether it be putting cards or tiles in certain ways, having the most of these or a number of them etc etc. These will score points you'll be using your markers on them as soon as somebody gets one of those or if there's a tie as soon as other people get as soon as multiple people get those, they're locked and nobody else can get them after that point for the rest of the game. The other interesting thing is you have this little construction marker token here. Uh, when you take one of these tiles here, you're going to then, uh, or, or I should say cards, you're going to then move that to the location where you took it. So if this was the case where I took this guy here, put this out and these guys came out as well and you put them down. Uh, when you fill and place, when this marker is there, the next time somebody takes this specific card here with the marker above it, or whenever anybody takes a card, a construction card, with the marker above it, they'll have to discard a card from their hand first before they can take that tile, or that tile card, construction card. And uh, that's going to keep you from getting the best and newest card and newest tiles, uh, unless you want to sacrifice a little bit of hand advantage in the game. Other things to note is on the cards, some of them are going to have valuable uh, resources, whether it be meteorites or new locations and other times there'll be construction lo locations these are basically useless they have little like they're kind of like a pre-built building or almost built building but you can place constructions on them the ones with the little houses otherwise nothing can be placed on them there's some other things to note too, is when you get robots in the game, these will cover up the numbers of certain cards of yours, allowing you to kind of rechange your placement of cards. And then these tokens here with the recycle icon will let you swap tiles on your game board, which is also very, very useful. Otherwise though, tally up your points, whoever has the most is the winner in this interesting tile placement. It's got like a card placement, it's got tile placement, uh, moon shaping colony game, Luna Capital. All right, what did I think about it? All right, so playing Luna Capital, this game was a hell of a lot of fun. Basically, you're gonna be taking your cards and you'll be creating this three by infinite grid of construction cards. You'll be utilizing anything on those cards to benefit you. You'll be attaching construction tiles onto those cards spaces and trying to connect certain tiles with other tiles pushing, uh, gaining resources, utilizing specific types of tiles that connect with other tiles. This feels a lot like Mad King, uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig. It feels like Between Two Castles and other tile placement style games, but with a unique twist. Construction cards, how you place them matters. This is kind of its own puzzle in its own way. And then when you're attaching the tiles to them, it adds an extra element of different construction. The fact that they also function in different ways and allow you to manipulate them in certain ways is great. The fact that these robots allow you to kind of rechange your, or retake 
make your decisions when placing cards is important because if you place cards poorly in this game, you're going to lose. What I also liked about this game is there's a ton of different objectives in the game. You have the red and the green ones. These supply a, a load of replayability as far as the different objectives you're trying to go for, and they give you a ton of points as well. You want to be the first person to get these guys if you can, but they are actually fairly challenging. And because of the challenge that is involved with these guys here, you have to be careful of when and how you play certain things. The first player marker moves around after every single uh, phase of the game, and there's gonna be three phases, A, B, and C. So my one tiny negative is that if you're for playing a four player game, one player is never going to be the first player, which in this case was me, but that's okay. In general, that's probably the one little flaw or drawback I would say it has is I never got to be first player and that made me so sad. <laughs> quality of the game. This game's excellent quality. I love the fact that you get to build not only the different pieces that accompany the cards and the tiles, but also inside the game box itself. It has a place where you're going to be putting all your tiles in, where you're going to be putting your first player marker. It comes with promo cards with rules uh, on a little, one of those little things that you scan, whatever, the QR codes. And that adds a nice little bit to the game box. Everything kind of fits in its own space in the box. You're only going to need one baggie and it's very easy to set up. The game is complex, but not in a way that is hard to understand. It's what you do and where you place things that makes the difference. And also when these guys come up, these also change the style of play of the game. People are going to try to go for these specific objectives. Some of them are going to be very difficult. Others, it's all about racing to see who gets them first. And um, there's just a ton of different variety. Um, the fact that this moves around the board and new cards are open and are more available, but there's a cost to those new cards is nice. And your hand does make a difference as far as what numbers you have in them in order to make placement work for your cards. So sometimes the new and most brightest and shiniest thing might come out and you might want it for a tile or two, but the card might be bad. And you also don't want to lose a card in your hand that might be good. Maybe you need a specific run of cards in order to make your tiles work. It does everything great. The tokens are wonderful. I love the board. I love the player boards. The cards are thick and nice and they work very well. Everything is structured and very easy to understand, very easy to play, very easy to set up. I think this game probably took me about 10 minutes to play, but I think for other people who are very, very into games, who've played a lot of games before, this would be even quicker as to how the game would um, be explained and understood. I played with some people who are newer to games and because of that it took probably a little bit longer than usual, but I think that for the most part, this game is very, very easy to understand, very easy to comprehend. All the pieces represent what they want you to do, how they function on them. And then the scoreboard or score booklet does a very good job of explaining that as well. The one thing I would say as well on the scoreboard, a minor uh, meh, is that you can get up to three different sets of these fruits and stuff like that, but it doesn't say how many points you get for each set on this specific score sheet, which you have to look up in the rule booklet. It's a minor inconvenience, but I'm really trying to nitpick to find things that I didn't like about this game. <laughs> Basically the first turn player marker for a four player game and the fact that the fruit symbol marker, the fruit symbol sets were not illustrated how many points you get. That's pretty much it. Otherwise, this is a solid tile placement game. It's got a great theme. It feels flowy. It's nice. I love the fact that when I gather my construction card and my tiles, I'm then able to take all that, replenish, and just let everybody else keep playing. And while they are playing their turns, I can kind of construct my board, giving me a bunch of extra free time to make the best board possible without taking up other players' time when I'm looking on, on my turn. My turn's easy. One to four choices, take those and the associated tiles refill, I'm done. And during the time in which everybody else is doing that same thing is when I construct. And that for me was excellent. I love that because it made the game feel really quick. Even when people took longer on their turns, I had something to do, something to look forward to and something to place down onto my field. Nothing that you play is going to affect the other players. The only thing that affects the other players in the game is what you take, but because there's only four options, what you take will affect the other players and it can happen multiple times. Things they might want, things they might want to need to connect. And if they make poor choice in placement, it's going to affect them greatly, which is a good amount of strategy and a good amount of, uh, talking and playing together in this game as far as, oh, I really wanted that piece, but that's pretty much it. You're not gonna actually be specifically going out of your way to target people unless you're looking at their boards and seeing what they're doing. But for the most part, you're paying attention to your own game board. Uh, at the end of the game, you're gonna have a big, fat, beautiful, beautiful lunar colony. And I think it just does a really good job of that. This is a game is staying in my collection. This is probably my favorite game from Devere so far. I really, really enjoyed this one. I think they did an excellent job with how many tiles they are associated with this game. There's a ton of different choices in this game. There's promos that I haven't even gotten to try yet. Yes, Lunar Capital, 
Excellent game. This is going to get my seal of approval. Probably my first one in a, uh, quite a while, actually. But yes, a seal of approval for this game. If you like tile placement and card placement, uh, situating certain things, this is going to be for you. Definitely loved it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Lunar Capital by Devere. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this game as well as check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We do live streams at 6.30 p.m. PST every Sunday. We can watch you play games just like this one here. In fact, we have a bonus live stream on this Sunday at 5.30 where we'll be playing on YouTube first and then we'll switch over to Facebook and Twitch. We'll do uh, um, a bonus game of Mercurial here on YouTube. And then we're going to go ahead and switch over and play some other games um, at 6.30 on the Facebook, the average one we do. We'll be doing a giveaway as well for one, if not both, streams. And you can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this one. Watch more review videos where I not only cover how the game is played, what the game is about, but also what I thought of the game and whether or not it would be right for you. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to building a lunar capital colony on the moon without you.